is good. Beer is good. Beer is good. And stop. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to this episode of the Beer Chasers. So the last couple episodes, you've seen us do some cider tastings with our friend Mike from At The Bar Podcast, and uh, that trend's going to continue today. So the original plan was we were going to film two cider episodes with two ciders each for a total of four. But as we were about to wrap up, Mike said, hey, I've got a couple more ciders in the fridge. You want to go ahead and check some out? And uh, we had a couple drinks, and I was feeling a little too loose. wasn't sure if the review was going to come out okay. I said, you know what? Let's just go ahead and roll film. Let's just kind of do this a little loose and informal. So uh, that's what we did, and uh, we can go ahead and present that to you now. Here's Cider Part 3. Check it out. So welcome to a very special behind-the-scenes footage of a podcast that's not mine. <laughs> it's Preston's. It's the my beer podcast, chasers. But he's hosting. I'm taking this one over. Yeah. We just met, what, two hours ago? Or something, something like that. For the very time. first time. I mean, we, we've been internet pals. Yeah, internet months, pals. But... I watch his show, he watches mine. We kind of talk, give each other tips. You know, we're rival podcasts. I guess. Kind of. So we do both do beer. But that's, we're that's both in Orlando. The beauty of beer, right? It's like, it's not like that. Like, no. You, in, in the craft beer world, like you want people to, to expand and see new things and taste yeah. new things. So like, yeah. I have no problem saying, hey, check out At The Bar Podcast. It's not my podcast. It's my buddy's podcast. He likes beer. I like beer. Yeah, I have no like problem beer. saying, hey, the beer chasers, they're freaking the cool guys here on the block. Check them out. But I mean, we're all just drinking beer. And it's not like the Boston Red Sox and the New York Yankees. We're all just, right. we all like beer come together and just enjoy beer for what it is. Yeah. So, this is a very special to coincide with the cider episode that we had just finished. Yeah, we did two cider episodes and uh, so this is kind of a little This is a little, very, little something special I want to treat my new friend here. This is Woodchuck's Private Reserve Barrel Select. What it is is a 6.9% Woodchuck cider that's fermented in old whiskey bourbon barrels. Comes out every year for about Two months, to three months. To, they they change every year. It's a, it's a, two years ago it came out for one month. This year it came out for they say three months, but I always saw it on the shelves for two months. Yeah, but, and that's exciting to hear because one thing that drives me absolutely crazy in the beer world right now is all these one-off these collaborations. Like mm -hmm. I love getting great beer, but I've always said when I do something on my show. People have to be able to go out and get it. Now, it might not be right now. They, it may be out of season, but hopefully next year, if we give it a good review here, then people go out and get it. Right. And, and I mean, Woodchuck is near and dear in my heart. They, I've, t I've discussed various topics with them on Twitter, so there will, be, there will be, yeah, <laughs> Woodchuck right here. I mean, look at the poster behind Preston here. It's dang Woodchuck. But the cool thing about Woodchuck is that we didn't touch on is that behind each label, they have a pairs with oh, nice. dessert and pork. Or chicken and fish, depending on <laughs> which woodchuck you get. Doesn't everything pair with dessert and pork? I mean, I think so, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, woodchuck is is this is very special stuff. This is this is my favorite woodchuck. Is this? Cool. Well, I appreciate you sharing. Like no I said, problem, we're just gonna kind of do an informal review here. Yeah. Nothing crazy. You want to go through rankings, or you just want to kind of take? Let's just let's, let's just go through the, what we normally did. You okay. know, the last two parts. So color. Now look at the color. Yes, that is a uh, copper. Yeah, copper. It's copper because it's coming from the it, the color is coming from. The whiskey barrel, so it's going to help brown it out, which is what you know the color of whiskey yeah, is, right? Not cloudy. You can see not through. cloudy. It's crystal clear, but it's very, very orange, very copper, like a penny. Okay. You so, still get the carbonation. The head's not there, so. So how would you rate that one? Five out of five. Five out of five. This That's is beautiful. Good. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. I, I see where this is going. We'll give it a nose. We'll just go through it. Just we'll just go one. through it. Yeah. Just go through it. Now tell me oh, what you think. That's definitely bourbon. You can oh, yeah. definitely get some of that bourbon. Bourbon. Bourbon, bourbon, it almost kind of smells like honey. If you smell it again, you may kind of. No, you're right. Maybe yeah. like a honey aspect. Maybe not necessarily in flavor, but definitely aroma. You, you, you're, you're like no, a you're honey. absolutely right. That honey, and you definitely smell like the whiskey. Maybe barrel. a little bit of smokiness, just a little bit. But Very, it's definitely, oh man, it smells. Nothing amazing. like I would ever imagine a million years that a cider would smell like. Yeah, I mean, Woodchuck is our innovators. That's why I love Woodchuck is they take a cider, instead of just making cider, 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 they take it and they branch it off with raspberry cider and like pear cider, granny smith cider, like mm -hmm. Belgian white. They use like blue moon to make cider, like chemistry that blows my mind. All right, so smell or are we going to say five? Smells a five out of five, man. <laughs> five out of five. Cheers. Cheers, brother. Thank you, man. Hey, you're welcome. Ooh, ooh, ooh. That's interesting. Ooh. <laughs> five out of five. <laughs> hey, five out of five. Um, it's smooth. Yeah. And it's, it's really whiskey smooth. smooth. Yeah. Not cider like bubbly, carbonation kind of fluffy and light. This is like smooth. 
Yeah. Um, I, I'm not really the lost yeah. like, uh, <laughs> Compared to what I've had, like the last four sides you have, this this is like a, a hair below, like stout smooth. You wouldn't think that would work, whiskey and apple, like so much, but right. it does. It really does. It, works. it really works, and it's not like thin. It's not necessarily full, it's medium body, but it's consistent yeah. throughout. And I know, um, I know casking is kind of like one of the hot popular things right now. Everybody's kind of coming out with a cask beer, and um, I don't like a lot of them because it's generally too much. Like, I, I love whiskey, it's mm -hmm. not necessarily in my beer, you know? Mm -hmm. So, like, I know Innocent Gun is a great example of doing it right, yeah. and I've definitely had some ones that are like, oh my god, this is too much, and I think this is a, a great balance. It's a balance, and that's what, you know, this all tonight, I said, was what makes a good cider, is balance. And it's not balanced between dry and sweet. It's balanced to what your palate mm -hmm. is. And for me, woodchuck for me is what I consider a perfect balance with the private reserve barrel select, with their amber, with pear, whichever ones you've had. The ginger cider, they have a ginger cider. Okay. <laughs> so it's it's they have tons of stuff, and they're always coming every year. They have seasonals. They have their fall, winter, spring, summer. And then they have caramel apple cider. Dude, my, my buddy John, you know, Beer Chaser John, made a made a delicious caramel cider. That, that's really piqued my interest and in wanting to try to brew a cider, because I, mm. I would like to do that, I think, add that mm. kind of caramel, really sweeten it up. And like like we said in the first part, is that cider is the easiest thing to do for home brewing, because all you need is sugar, thyme, yeah, thyme. and <laughs> yeast, thyme, and cider. I mean, I think you could literally do it in the jug. I mean, I don't think they recommend it. You probably want to put it in a carboy, but like, I think you could literally... I mean, make, you can make like essentially a, do it in a, in a gallon of milk carton. Yeah. Sanitize it, fill it, you know, pop it and to allow the pressure to come yeah. out, and then have, put it in your closet for a week. It's uh, like, for it's a like month. one step above like jail wine, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just one step. Yeah, just barely. I mean, um, I mean, even like, even picture this with like a nice pork roast. Like, oh, yeah, dude. Fuck yeah. I mean, you know, like you have your, your pork and you got, you know, your sides, your corn, your, you know, your greens and you're sipping on this yeah. like oh, this is really good. It. It's six point nine percent. It's not yeah. boozy. It's and that's what I was gonna say when we got to the mouthfeel part. If you want to rate the mouthfeel, I was gonna say that is that being seven percent, you really don't taste it. No, you know, like it's very no. smooth. Um, it's, it's a little bit of dryness, but it was kind of that way with the amber. And again, it's not right. a super detriment to, to the beer. It's not like that strong bow where it's like, Ugh, what is this? But right. I mean, that could come from the bourbon too with depending on the barrels they use, could be a little bit more drier. But it all, it's, it's about the, their process and, and, and that's it to make it. I mean, this is, this is my jam right here. So now, I wish it came out. Going five, five out of five. Okay. I wish they had this all year round and they don't. And that's, that's a shame. <laughs> was, shame on you! You know, a couple years ago I, I had this for 4th of July back when it came out over the summer mm -hmm. and I had a whole six pack out, six pack at 6.9% in the sun like lighting fireworks and <laughs> I was drunk. This guy was super drunk. And it's not like a girl be you know, a girl drinker. I mean this yeah if you're drinking for ABV, this is six point nine. I guarantee you you call this a girl drink, he'll punch you in the mouth. So I'm just saying, not very girly, you know. He'll no, it's not a cider. Yeah, it's sweet and yeah, it could be like a mics or a lemonade, but it's it's not. It's that bridge between you know your Bartles and James and, and you know, oh, know your Bartles and James, I forgot about Bartles yeah. and James. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Going way back. Dude, I want one of those posters, the dudes. I want one of those now. I want that from my beer. I might right? add that like right here. Marlon James right there? Right there. I mean, it's one of those drinks that, you know, it's, it's not girl drink. It's not a guy drink. It's for everybody. Right, and cool. Saturdays are easily drinkable. So. so so overall, I mean, I mean, this, this is, is it. it. For a, Doesn't get any better no, than this. Mm -mm. This is my favorite cider of all time. Very cool. And I've had a ton of ciders. Well, don't punch me. When I say no, it, no. I'll give it an eight and a half. Um, again, I love the bourbon aspect of it. I think it definitely ups the grade a couple points from the regular amber. Mm -hmm. Still, though, I think there's some room for improvement. I think I would like more of the sweeter ones, like I said, like something with caramel in it. Mm -hmm. that, that angry orchard, I think I gave it an eight and a half or an eight, so you know. I mean, that's just um, your palate. You tend to exactly. go from some more, a little bit on the sweeter half right. of the spectrum, more so than the middle and the dry. Yeah. That's fine. But it's still a delicious I respect beer. That. Um, I, I know cider fans, so I'm definitely going to be preaching this one, too, because it's definitely unique. You have to. This is a beer chasing cider. I'm, right. I would definitely send somebody 50 miles to go find it if this was the only store. I'd say it's worth a 50 mile drive to go pick up a six pack. Hey, bring me and Mike back one too. Yeah, it literally is. I mean, this is limited 
from what last I knew, this is a limited release. It's only available for certain months, and not everyone gets it. Yeah. Uh, when they first uh, let this out a couple years ago, certain cities east of the Mississippi got it. And we're here, or in Orlando, we were the only city in Central Florida to get it. And of, from St. Pete all the way to Daytona, all the way down to, you know, down south, all the way up to Tallahassee, only two places carried it. And then one was right here? And okay. one was... On the corner here. The ABC right here. Wow. Shout out to ABC. Yeah, ABC, you guys are awesome. ABC Beer Country. But they didn't carry this this year. Shame on you. I get it from Target. Target? Mm -hmm. Of all places. Target and Shamrock Liquor on University were the only ones that Shamrock is awesome. I, only, I, think I need to do an episode two, there sometime. In the 10 mile radius of my house right here is the only people that I think I love about Shamrock, it's like an, an all all in one shop. You can get like beer, Gym. wine, oh, yeah. liquor, cigarettes, playing cards, dice, condoms, <laughs> like beer pop it's all there. Yeah, beer pop, like, everything. I, I mean, it's right across from the college, yeah. you know. But I mean, they really do cater to everything. And now they have public house next door, which is uh, uh, which is a uh, can't think of the word now, but it's a 1940s bar, themed bar. Yeah, see, like Pepper, you like, gotta go in there, yeah, see, yeah, give me a beer, see, see. Yeah, see, give me a beer, <laughs> see. A prohibition, okay. like a prohibition, so you got like, they have big pictures on the wall of people breaking open and pouring beer out, and, and it's oh, all clean, what a shame, so. Man. Hey, Shamrock well, cool. and ABC, get this, come on, you're killing me right now. Oh, well, I really appreciate it again, thank you very oh, much, I know this is from your, your private cellar, you've been kind of holding on this a little bit. A little bit. I know it's hard to find, so I always appreciate that. Yeah, no problem, anytime, um, man. Well, I guess I'll wrap up this kind of impromptu, impromptu side, cider three cider bonus, bonus content. content. <laughs> maybe you'll see it, maybe you won't. Maybe I you'll, hope you see it. Maybe you'll see it. see it. You'll see it in some, some capacity. It'll be yeah, cut. There you go. Boop, boop, boop. It'll be an eight second cider. Hopefully, you so. get my good side. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's going to wrap up Cider Part 3, kind of an impromptu review we weren't really planning on doing. Hopefully you all enjoyed that. Definitely appreciate Mike hooking up the ciders and uh, reaching way back into the cellar there to find that one for us. Really appreciate it. You can check out Mike at At The Bar Podcast. Uh, really cool stuff, really good guys, so go ahead and check it out. So like I mentioned in the intro, we have one more impromptu review that we're going to release next week. So hopefully you tune in and check that out. But uh, until then, we'll see you later. Beer is good. Beer is good. Beer is good. Good. Beer is good. Beer is good. Let's go drink some.